Well, you know, I just can't get enough of that opening song. I just think it's just it's great. So good. It's under our voices right now. Can you hear it right under us? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, and it just kind of gets me going. <laughs> oh, I'm being real buoyed by I it. I know, I'm it's really super buoyed by this. Well, you always call me a robot. It's kind of like my little theme song, I know. right? Yeah, yeah, it is like a little theme for a little robot thing, but it's playing underneath us right now. Yeah, it's going to kick in in a second. Kick it in. Just kick, kick it in. Kick it in. Kick Three, it in. Three, two, one. Dun, 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 dun. Smart. Now, uh, so we had a little record earlier today, and now we're mm -hmm. having our second record. There was a gap in between where lunch usually sits, and I always, right. whenever this happens, I'd love to know what Sean had. Oh, good. I had uh, chicken curry with rice and uh, cauliflower and sweet potatoes, and then I had a huge bowl of ice cream after. Wait, you had chicken curry with rice? Yeah. I, I, did, not, I did not know that uh, Chef yeah. already made that. Yeah. Right. That's funny. Chin -chin. That's, that's yeah. new. But yeah. you see, I didn't change. I still, I'm still in my smartless no, merch we got shirt. That. Yeah. yeah. Right. Smartless merch. There's some good stuff in there. I was, uh, I guess, I shouldn't be surprised because we looked at it all before it went in there. But let me tell you something. I slept in this. Shop, shopsmartless.com. It's the best. Oh, stuff. it's 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 sleepable. Is soft? that what it is? Wait, is it shopsmartless.com for real? Shopsmartless.com. Yeah. What's it I again? Know that. Sorry, Sean. What'd you Shop. say? <laughs> shopsmartless.com it's great it's i'm telling you you, you you sleep in the sweats you put the hat on when you roll out of bed it's great who um did you design the blanket those big heavy blankets you did right you wanted i didn't the heavy design blanket. them but i what's that you wanted the heavy blanket i wanted the heavy blanket because i have an issue with a throw blanket a throw blanket yeah. covers one leg Right. So I never understood the, the, the function of a throw blanket. No, I'm saying to... I like it because it's, it's, oh. it's weighty. Yeah, it's weighty and it's big. It covers your whole body. And it's, uh, it's like, um, what do you call it? Uh, Warm? Fleece, like fleece, I guess? Is it yeah. fleece? Hey, by the way, yeah. you know yeah, what I, I did? Oh, I, definitely Scott. whisper. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be... For Scotty, I got him a oh, surprise. Okay. I got John Williams, the composer, yeah. Yeah. to sign a page of the E.T. score. For Scotty. Wow. How'd you do that? Did yeah. you just go over? A just... friend of mine knows, is friends with his daughter, and then yeah. we just kind of made it happen. Are you guys good at that? Are you good? Well, it sounds like you are, Sean, where you, you sort of like, you remember what your your friend or partner or kid or whatever really loves, <laughs> uh -oh, and you go. work on it for a few months, <laughs> yeah. and you get the perfect gift. Like, yeah. do you do yeah. that? I every love year? doing that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hey, yeah. W Will, you don't need to go up high like, Everybody in the world does it except you, Jason. <laughs> like I don't yeah. do it, so that's why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I yeah, it's true. He's, yeah, Will is Will. Do. Will's very good at throwing money at a gift. Of you course, know, Sean like, and I am very good at that. You're very <laughs> yeah. good at that. Whereas Sean, you you'll do sort of a sentimental thing. Or yeah. I remember you said in July that what you wanted for Christmas was that's right. Uh -huh. Like I clocked, I clocked last year. Yeah. For um. For Maple's birthday, she yeah. said she just mentioned that she loved skateboarding. So I got her a skateboard or a certificate for a skateboarding thing. Yes, and we went and spent the hell out of that. Did you, you remember? That's how she broke all her teeth. Remember? Yeah. Thanks, John. Yeah. <laughs> remember that time she's... she broke her arm and all her teeth came? She had to spit her teeth out. That's why she's got those flippers yeah. now. And we've got this <laughs> memory of her, and she takes her teeth out every night. She thinks of you when she has to take them out. Uh, hey, by the way, though, back to the ice cream thing. Yeah. I didn't tell you this, Jay. Last episode we recorded, you we talked about you having their uh, what is it called the uh, root, root root canal. Yeah, root canal. I had a cavity. You had one, and I just got yeah, just last week. Okay, and I, I got a crown. Pot. Not possibly your first. No, oh my god, I have so many. But Do at you? fifty-two years old, I have a cavity. Oh, they're going to start well, coming fast and furious. That is strange. Let's take a look at your diet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what what is strange about things on your body degenerating as you get older? Well, but I floss and I brush and I do everything, so it's like why teeth oh. teeth don't play by that No, because they're sitting in sugar all day yeah i will say this when you're having ice cream when you're having dessert for lunch yes breakfast, you, have a, you, have, for, you have a situation he had dessert for breakfast the other day hey i yeah. i did have a thing um where my fa one of my favorite sweeteners that i use i don't want to say which one uh with my coffee because i thought oh i'm not having sugar for been a few years i've been using a sweetener and i see that one of its ingredients this study came out yesterday a huge study saying that it causes like uh strokes and heart attacks and yeah shit. oh i saw that yeah yeah really so i know fuck yeah i'm so fucking bummed well, yeah. well so you don't want to say this publicly since it's already public 
Well, just because it's an other, so I don't want to call it's out like the being, one particular it's, it's, brand. Yeah, yeah, it's right. being reported on or whatever. Yeah. Like, oh, so the that. sweet, the, the 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 sweetening component is yeah, the problem, not the right. brand. Right. One of the ingredients. In so it. then, what I is mean, the ingredient? Do you remember? I forget I what it's know called. If I'm, if I'm having that. No. Is it agave? It's no. in a lot of no, no. it's in a lot of st- sort of stevia centric sweeteners. Shit, have it in really? there. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Is that well, is that I'm, what you're using? Yeah, I'm mainline stevia. Damn. Yeah. So so a lot. I, I, I don't know if pure. St- I, I don't know, but I I know right. that some of them have it in. Anyways, guys. I know. Guy, real uplifting, huh? Are we, <laughs> let's get. To our are guest. we ready for our guest? Oh, I guess I'm let's sure. get to the guest. Before sure. I die, let's get it done. <laughs> Least we'll know why. Yeah, I got to exactly. say, <laughs> I, I gotta say, I get some of the best guests. This guy has had did not one. Did you write one. this intro? Did you write this intro? This is the intro. Yeah. Did you write it? Of course I did. Yeah. yeah that's kind this of... guy has not, has had not one but two songs written about him by a huge pop star. Most would agree he's Hollywood royalty, being an Academy Award winning filmmaker, a heavy hitting movie star who's portrayed a very famous DC comic book character on screen multiple times. I knew it is. But most importantly, just an all-around great guy that I'm so happy to call a friend who I love a whole bunch, and I know you fellas do too. Please welcome to Smartless, Mr. Benjamin Gaza Affleck Bolt. Benjamin Gaza. Oh no! <laughs> no, yes. there he is. Oh, what? I love him. I love Very him. Very nice. That Wait a second. Was... How did Sean get you and yeah. I don't? God damn it! Because I like him and he's yeah. a great guy. <laughs> you are a good actor. You, I always feel like I'm liked when I'm around you. Where are you? Are you in the basement? I'm in my lair. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. wow. yeah. Lower layer. Because crime might need to be fought. <laughs> and, uh, oh, God. I, uh, yeah, Wait, is, uh, what songs have been written about you? Dear Ben and Dear Ben Part 2. The songs written about me have been written by the greatest Jennifer Ooh, Lopez. Um, performer in the history <gasps> of the world, Jennifer Lopez. I don't know that they're exactly so much about me as maybe inspired by, because... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because there's some negative things. In there. So they're aimed at you. Yeah, I was going to say, are they flattering? She's amazing. Yes. Can you imagine? And also, I th- also there is a third song Uh-oh. written about me, but not by anyone gifted. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel wrote a song about me <laughs> called "I'm Fucking Ben Affleck." Oh, wait, did uh, did, did he uh, really? Did Jennifer did. write the songs about you during or when you weren't dating? Jennifer, Ro- uh, you know what, Jason? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, this, You've asked I, me I just want to know if they're happy songs or sad songs. Over and over, and I tell you, if you want to ask Jennifer about her career, <laughs> if you're interested in her work, <laughs> go ahead and screw your courage I, to the I sticking learned, plate and ask her. I learned a lot about uh, about her with that great documentary. Um, I love that. That was really I loved it. Wasn't that amazing? Cool. Yeah, yeah I loved it. watched that. I that was that very was good. that was incredible. It yeah, is. and by the way, that's the first time, I know we're, we're going to interview you in just a second, but Jennifer Lopez, who was on Will and Grace twice or three times or whatever. Was uh, she, she on Will and Grace? That's funny. And I was, I was I on, not, one, two, no times. No, Jennifer, you were. No. This is the story of my Will life. Will was, I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> but she was, but that documentary blew me away because I was like, my God, the, what the woman has accomplished is astounding. Yeah, and she's it's just, uh, It takes a big yet. man not to feel inadequate in the face yeah. of my wife's <laughs> many, many, many but, um, but no, but she, she's but amazing. you too, you too, you've, you've accomplished. Oh, I don't feel bad about myself. It's not so much, I'm not low self-esteem. I'm not, well, I, I'm fishing a little bit, but not the, <laughs> no, the truth is it's amazing. Sometimes I think I like completely forget because yeah. like, here's this incredible actress and this incredible performer. And then we're sitting in the car, you know, and I'm humming along, like I will, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. the yes. radio. And then a, a professional singer goes ahead and, and you know, sings along, and you kind of feel like, well, that's embarrassing. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> you know, I should just zip it. Do you no, know all her music? Don't lie. I do know uh, Can all you her sing music. all of her songs? Not to you. No, but like, you know them, though? Like, I, 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 you can't, I, mean, I can't, I can't, I can't get a J-Lo like, song past where, you that you haven't heard. Waiting for the night. Oh, there it, it, I, that's the remix. <laughs> there it is. That's. I like uh, when Sean does it. Sound it kind of sounds like Cher is doing a re. Oh, waiting for the no. That was a, like a Cher waiting for. Something. Yeah, I think yeah. cross with a go. A, now you're making me self conscious. Like, oh gosh, mm-hmm. if I were on like Jeopardy, no. would I miss a question? But I do love her music. It's brilliant, and I know who doesn't. Uh, all of it. Thank you. Yeah, Jason, don't put him on the fucking spot. Yeah, fuck like him. a dick. What the just, fuck? What do you, know, you, you don't even remember your wife's birthday. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it starts with an A. It is surprising. <laughs> now, wait a second. Now, Ben. Uh, yes. Hi. 
hi Ben Affleck. Like Ben Affleck's on here. Hi Ben. We, I don't it's really great. We don't know hi, each other. Thank you. Somebody. Yeah. Yes. Hi. We do, I I don't have the pleasure of knowing you, but everybody who knows you likes you a great deal. I, and and I it's feel often like, like Bateman. You, he, he's doing the thing with Bateman, which is really so. I mean, it's good yeah. surprising. You, that you, yeah, it is. It is surprising. Very surprising. And, <laughs> uh, and as you know, uh, yes. So you, but you and Jason have known each other for a number of years. Yeah, I, I've mark? known Jason a long time, and I had the chance to do like now four movies with the guy. I know, Very and the, and by the way, the trailer for Air and looks now incredible. Looks amazing for your guy for the new movie you guys did that you've invited Jason to be part of. And any regrets, and you can be honest now. You can be if you have regrets about. <laughs> I got to tell you, I <laughs> yeah. mean, usually, and I hate you know when people come on shows yeah. and they're like, you know, you're great. No, yeah. but yeah. what you bring, yeah. because it's just so fucking boring to listen to. And you yeah. Have to, yeah. But I'm gonna Let's do hear it. it, and let me tell you why. Because <laughs> it's actually true, and I've lied so many times <laughs> that it's nice to get the chance. Jason is fucking amazing. Guys, let in him the finish. Movie. Let and him finish. has our Jason. Has the yeah. Yeah, hardest yeah. part in the movie, which there is the is. part where you're supposed to, you know, the guy who's like, but if we don't make it to the train station by six, you know, the whole time, you know, it's constantly <laughs> yeah. having to tell the audience what the stakes are. Yeah. Look out. What's going to happen. Turn right. <laughs> and somehow, like, made himself, you know, the most, I think, like, the most, uh, mm -hmm. you know, compelling, real, mm -hmm. you're drawn yeah, to, it's enough. brilliant. A lot mm -hmm. of it's I love improv it. and funny, and yeah, a lot of it's just humanity, but it's, Jason's brilliant, and it was such a, I was really lucky, because that, it's, what Matt did, very easy. When right. you're the sure. lead, and you're that guy, and you have those yeah. lines. And, exactly. You know what this scene is? This is me looking out the window. Yeah. That's the music. Right. Yeah. You know, that's going to help you. That's the wind at your back. I was the one working. <laughs> Do you know, by the way, you should know, Ben, that we were at, we, we watched uh, the Super Bowl at, at, at Kimmel's. And oh yeah, I have a pro this is a problem. Hang on, so we're watching, and, we're, and, and at that moment that the that the ad for your movie came on, Jason and I were sitting there, and Jimmy happened to kind of drift in right between us, and then I said, "Hey, quiet, everybody! Here's the, here's the the, the commercial for the big movie," and Jason was all excited, and then there was just a silhouette just a for flash. a second, and then nothing. Silhouette, and then yeah. Jason's daughter goes. Dad, I thought you were in that movie. Oh, my God. In front of my kids, Ben. <laughs> that can't be true. Both it's kids. a true story, right, Jason? Is that true? <sighs> it's a true story. But listen, there's many different I mean, it's my fault in the sense that I did see it and not notice. Oh, but but, but this it's is, not my is, fault in the sense I didn't make it. <laughs> and let me, can I talk to your daughter? This is, your this daddy's is, very good. This is, all, and this he's, is it, all a joke. But it, it, it was actually pretty funny. It was like... Hey, thought you were in that. And everybody goes back to their chips oh, and watching dude. other people. I've been there. You know um, what I mean? When things aren't panning out in your career and you've been in the movie and all of a sudden you're like, I, I think I show up in this train. <laughs> no, the worst, nope, went, no, the worst is when you're at the premiere and they go past the point where you know your big scene was mm. and it's, it's now gone. And they've moved on and you're like, oh, yeah. guess that was cut. You're like, Mom, no, this is where I have the monologue. <laughs> oh, 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 maybe it comes later now. I don't uh, know. Maybe it's yeah. during the credits. I saved it for during the credits. Anyway, I'll do it for you at home. It'll probably need special features. Yeah. So, Ben, talk to me a little bit about, you know, we had Matt who came and joined us on um, on tour. He came to Madison, Wisconsin. When you think Madison, Wisconsin, you think Matt Damon. That's the thing about Matt is he'll always do something nicer than me. Uh, yeah, it's like so, Matt. Uh, hey, what you're doing is great. You know, Matt went a whole lot further. <laughs> no, yes. no, no, great. No, but we did. We, but we talked to him about about how you guys started, how you guys knew each other back in the day, and what that was like when you guys were kind of yeah. Both. It was really cool. Yeah, it was it was great really hearing from him and I and, and I'd love to hear your perspective of how you guys and I'm I'm sure you've told it a million times. So forgive me if if it's no. if it's boring. But for us, it's really. I love that story, and I told Matt, I remember we made this really bad, um, I, I say bad, but my friend wrote it, but this really uh, pretty chintzy version of a movie called Southie, and nice. you guys came to the rap party <laughs> that I was in, and then you guys were about to do Goodwill Hunting, and then our movie would like, they buried it under a couch somewhere, and then you guys <laughs> went on to, like, amazing. But I just love the beginnings of what you and Matt did, and I want to hear it from you uh, because I think it's a great story. And by the way, I had no idea you guys grew up so close to each other. No idea. Yeah, we did. First of all, it's like, it's a really lucky thing, it occurs to me now. I saw him the other day, and we're doing this movie together. Very few people are lucky enough to spend their life in the same line of work with their best friend from when they were kids. 
managed to, you know, stay friends, not end yeah. up hating each other, yeah. actually be friends and love each other. And, and not have one of them soar to the stratosphere and the other one be, have nothing that was ever brief. happen. But no, 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 um, but I'm saying like, that's like, that's what usually happens. The fact that both of you guys are superstars. Yeah. Um, so in context, the reason we're asking this hacky question <laughs> is because yeah. in Air, the film that we're talking about, Ben, for the very, very first time, directs Matt. I love it. It's full circle. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, it was something that seemed really normal and that I took for granted because there we were. We were kids who, he was a bigger kid uh, for a brief period. I, I was like eight. He was 10. He was a big kid. He played baseball. He was really cool. He had a bowl cut that was a little oh. feathered that we all oh. wanted, of course. <laughs> and he and he was, um, you know, nice to me. And we were both uh, interested in the same. I mean, just, just kids who grew up two blocks apart and both wanted to be actors uh, for whatever reason it is that makes you want to do that thing and hung out and then we're in the same the same friend group and then sort of went off and did like oh let's you know we're just like dumb and enough to think like it'll pan out for us but we'll just go mm -hmm. be actors we'll just go work <laughs> yeah. you know and yeah. and kind of uh, sort of believe it and then live together but the, I think the reason why it wasn't a thing, that sort of competition thing that you talk about, is because we did a lot of auditioning very early on for for for, for the Mickey Mouse Club, for example. Mm, amazing, huh? uh, I think maybe for some of Jason's early work. Um, Gosling got the Mickey Mouse job. He did. He was one of them. Yes, we did. We uh, uh, a Corey Haim film called Soul Man. I remember we both auditioned for. We did. Okay. We we both auditioned for Robin and the 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 Clooney uh, movie. No yeah. way. Uh-huh. Yeah, we were extras together all the time. Uh, Matt did Mystic Pizza. He had a line in that. I didn't get it. And and always the thing was we would get our, you know, little act together and practice our scenes and do our workshop. I mean, nerdy doesn't even Less. begin to <laughs> describe it. Really? And But it really was a genuine thing where we were able to be like, look, I hope I get the part. But if I don't, I really hope you do. Right. Yeah. And, you know, for a while we had this thing where we were like, we'll just split all our money. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, and you guys had high voices. We like had, oh, you Did you right. really say that? We really did, and we really split the money. We no way. We put it in the bank account. At the time, I was Wait, making the serious? lion's share of the money. Yes. No way. How old were you? Yes, I am. We had a joint bank account. I I think I was we were, I was 14, Matt was 16, something like oh, that. Wow, that's cool. That's that's really I put really awesome. money in the ATM, and yeah, then was like, okay, so cute. what do you want to get? <laughs> I saw you made a big withdrawal last weekend. <laughs> Joking as much as you are, but it does show that on a certain level, there is a trust there that you guys just trust each other implicitly, that there's just, right, yeah. that that's on a very basic level. I, like, took for granted that he liked me and rooted for me and wanted me to succeed. We just didn't, we're lucky enough not to have the friendship of that, the whole, like, it's not enough that I succeed, all my friends have to fail thing. Like, And I, there are people I've wanted to fail. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we all have I can be just as petty and bitter as yeah. any other actor, but mm -hmm. I loved him, and he loved me, and it felt like we would work the scenes together, and, you know, it, it actually, I think what made us sort of good writers and better actors was that we learned very early on to hear, like, I'm not sure that works, that choice, you know? And you go, mm -hmm. okay, let's try something else, you know, and mm -hmm. get our facts, our sides. Let's and try a lower together. voice. Did you ever give that note? Uh, that I had to hit puberty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so wait, but you, but when you say you grew up, you grew up uh, uh, together in Boston, right? But you were born or raised in California. Like, what's the I California thing? I was born thing? in California. My parents were at a uh, teaching at a like an experimental school outside Berkeley, briefly, mm -hmm. and then actually my mom and yes, and then I moved back to Boston around two or three. I moved into a. Um, a uh, Central Square in Cambridge, and then Matt moved there from Newton when I was eight, and he was ten, and that's when we met at, at the ba at the basketball. And you got a Burger King commercial. That was your very first thing. Listen, I had done a Burger King commercial. Okay, the, the, I'm sure you remember the law, the slogan was sometimes you got to break the rules. Yeah, oh, sure. And I oh was yeah, a, I'm uh -huh. a little bit of a rule breaker. Yeah, uh, I, really quick, I did it. I did it. These guys are gonna love this. I did a McDonald's commercial. Uh, one of my first things where I worried I, I worried about how I was going to impress a girl uh -huh. and the catchphrase from my guy scene partner was don't worry about it I was like how am I going to pay for the date don't worry about it that's my story 
So wait, go back to the burger. Holy thing. shit! You're gonna, the we're, fuck you're are gonna you get doing? Tired Ben's one got a head of steam going. You're gonna and be you out of the job. So You'll moments. be without a podcast. No one of these punchline out of gas. Jesus! Oh, wait, fucking oh, wait. Sorry, go so, ahead, Ben. Anyway, let me just. Can I regroup? Do you mind? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ben, take all the time. Start over. Shake it off. Wait, and then you did like he's crying. We, so we were, I've established that we were very nerdy and a little weird. We yeah. used to have m business lunches in what was called the media cafeteria. Amazing. Which at the time, um, there was a big ESL uh, um, portion of our public high school, which was like 2,600 kids. And that was where the ESL kids, I don't know why that was where we, I, we liked to be surrounded by people who spoke other languages. I'm not sure what it was, <laughs> but we, mm -hmm. maybe we didn't want anyone to actually hear our business lunches sure. because there, no business was conducted. Yeah. Um, but we plotted things. We planned our careers. But look at you now. Look at the business you guys are in now. Art, artist equity, yes? Mm, yeah. Yeah. We, I, yeah, we, we, it, it is bizarre, like, to have gone this far. And definitely a lot of, I don't think I would, would be sane or as sane to the extent that I am had I not had somebody who was from where I grew up and who was my best friend and who was going through the same thing. So you could, because right. I'm sure you guys all know there are these moments in this business where you look around and go like, is this completely insane? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Every day. I feel Absolutely. as though, you know, I'm coming unglued. And, and having that one, someone to share that perspective and then so... As we went on and on, and so finally got to a place where, like with Last Duel, it was like, why haven't we just, we had so much fun. Every day on that set was so much fun. Mm -hmm. And we're just like, let's just do this. Let's just yeah. do movies together and with people we like. Yeah, but the, the first thing, but going back, the, the, the first thing that kind of launched was, was it Dazed and Confused or was it something before that? And what's yeah. the story about Vince Vaughn? He's asked a two-parter there. You can take him one at a time, <laughs> or you can ask him to repeat it. When he, he just, I get excited. I get heart. excited. I know it. Sean, I know it. Sean, I ever write these things down? in the pre-interview, the Vince bit. Uh, no, yeah. so I don't know where you're going with that. <laughs> no, but I heard. But I, I, heard I that, do know. Yeah. No, there's something. I do know that we that we I had done a couple of what I was the more experienced. I don't want to make Matt feel insecure. Sure. sure. I had some early experience with professional yeah. acting. You're selling burgers, you know? I was I, well not only did I sell burgers, but I don't know if you know your public television history. I was on a show. Voyage of the Mimi? No, nope. Voyage uh, of the Mimi. Know. Yeah. Uh, science. It was yeah. also shown to sixth graders for their science mm -hmm. class because I think because it was so gripping. Mm -hmm. huh. And a <laughs> young boy and his grandpa. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, renting out a boat to scientists for, oh. for, for experiments. Yeah. And so I would periodically go off and do a little voyage of the Mimi. So Matt was a little threatened <laughs> by that. And when I got to the high school, he kind of pulled me aside. And he said, listen, man, <laughs> all right, this is the theater. It's not about your looks, uh -huh. okay? It's about the work. <laughs> and I took that very seriously. And I wow. felt that I was wow. hearing something, you know, real, like the words of wisdom from a guy who understood it. Wow. I didn't know until that time he felt I'd been entirely bogarting my way through life on, like, <laughs> wit and charm and looks, of which there were very few. Well, um, but no, it sounds like actually you came roaring into high school just killing it. Yeah, you were, you were crushing it. You, and, Matt, and Matt, I mean, by the way, I mean, again, no insult to Matt, but it, it sounds like he he felt threatened by you, Ben. And and I want to just... I think maybe. I think maybe he was a little on the, guy. <laughs> the other thing he said to me was like, you know the thing about Hoffman in Salesman? As uh -huh. you can see the wheels turning, uh -huh. but he <laughs> wants you to see the wheels turn. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Damon, 15 years old. Matt. No way. Oh, like, that's uh, hysterical. That's a true story. Uh, that's <laughs> fucking amazing. However, but that's I, why he's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Because that guy has been absolutely convinced that and has paid attention to like, you know, very little else in his free time other than acting. Since he was a little kid doing Wheelock Community College Theater <laughs> when he was 11 years old. And he's been with absolute conviction that this is what he was gonna do. And he was a lot smarter about it than me. He understood a lot earlier on. He was like, it's, it's, it's just all about the director. I'm just gonna focus on the director. He was like passing on parts when we were broke. I said, like, what are you passing on? You can't pay the gas bill. What yeah. do you, what's like this? How is this not good enough for you? Because he didn't you know? like the director? Yeah, he just didn't feel, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't have anything to offer, you know? Oh, wow. And it was like that. I was, I'm like, I'm doing after school specials about <laughs> steroid abuse, uh -huh. and you're <laughs> passing on <laughs> right. like movies. Uh -huh. That's pretty um, great. But uh, I will say this you gave him a piece of advice that he has since 
uh, uh, paid for and given, and he let us in on it last year when he came to join us, which was <clears throat> apparently you said to him, if somebody asks you to do something down the road, imagine that the same, you know, we get it all, all the right. time. Hey, will you come and do this uh, six mm-hmm. months from now and come and show up at this thing? Imagine that you'd have to do it tomorrow and then let that be your answer. Yeah, if you don't want to do it if tomorrow, you don't want to do it tomorrow, say no. Say no. Yeah, oh. I did give. I never thought that was particularly wise. Ben, I it's, just thought no, it's because Matt was ever. constantly saying yes, and then be like, "Hey, man, can you call them and tell them I'm sick?" And I right? Said, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, and that's bullshit. It's, it's amazing. I I've it. told I've told minimum fifty people that piece of advice as if, as if I came up with it my own, and they have people lo- love it and have latched onto it. Right, JB? We've talked oh, about yeah, it all the time. I, I live it. I did it today. I yeah. got asked to do something really? like three months from now that sounds kind of interesting. That'd be kind of fun. But then I thought, well, actually, if it was on the calendar for tomorrow, would I would I wish that it was canceled? If the answer is yes, pass. pass. I love that. You know, yeah. the thing about that that I can't completely co-sign, like my dirty little secret is I might pass on everything. Did right. you <laughs> think about I, you know, I, I, like, I, I almost never want to get off the Did couch. you think about that this show today, about passing on this show? Oh, I mean, I, I was a half hour late, wasn't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They had to talk you out of it. Um, so for the guy who likes to do nothing except sit on his couch every day, like I do, I find it interesting that you're actually able to get up and work as hard as I think anybody could possibly work um, when it comes to directing. Like, that's a really, really all-encompassing job. So are you like me where it's like either all or nothing? I'm either working full or out. I I think you and I have that in common. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I think that um I think that part of it is uh it, it's a little bit like it, it's more sort of social things. Like I'm I feel actually kind of shy. I don't really want to go say hi to people. It feels Same. a little bit like oh, I'm going to, you know, something's going to happen. It's going to make me feel awkward. But I, I, I love directing movies, and that movie in particular was the best experience I've had. It, 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 directing is hard and terrifying, and at first I thought, like, okay, even if I don't know anything about this, I know that I can at least work harder than everybody else. And so yeah. I thought, well, you put in 20 hours a day, and that's what you do. And it made it excruciating, and I got migraines. But, like, to the extent that the, that the movies, um, you know, were, I was happy with, I, I thought, well, it must be because I worked 20 hours a day and did nothing else and thought of nothing else. Mm-hmm. And eventually realized that you don't quite have to do it that way. And that mm-hmm. actually, it, this movie, which is my the favorite movie I ever made, I love this movie, it, it, it benefits entirely from the writing and acting of Jason and Matt and Chris and Viola and... Uh, and Chris Messina and Matt Mayer, but it was so much fucking fun every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you're. It's your fault. I mean, he. he well, we, we don't have to do a whole thing on the kind of set you run and, and your talent and everything. But it was. It no, was, no, no. It we was can su- actually. I think no, we have yeah, to do that. Actually, yeah. I don't do we do have? That. We have twenty five. Um, <laughs> it was. Uh, it, it was actually incredibly easy, guys. We shot this down the street. Um, we shot it in in, an, in a business, uh, in, a, in an office building that um, you were supposed to be in an office building. So they basically just flipped the lights on. Now, that's to take nothing away from Bob Richardson, who is like the best DP in the history of movies. Um, but uh, it, it, it was very fast. I think after, wasn't it after like seven days, we were already three days ahead? Yeah, we, we like went, that? we got, I wanted to go quickly and then you, t- you and Matt showed up. Uh-huh. And like having not directed Matt, I didn't appreciate it. When you're a director, right, you have you have your plans, you have the you're worrying about all these other things. Yes, you're worrying about the performances, but I thought, okay, well, I won't have to worry about the performances, and I'll just worry about all the other sort of bullshit I, I'm doing that I think is relevant when really the actors the, are the only thing the audience is paying attention to. And like, you know, camera moves and that kind of thing. And Jason and Matt are such pros that no, I mean, it was like a dance to watch these two guys together. They've done it so much and so well, mm-hmm. so that as soon as you start to feel the dolly is late, it's not going to be, all of a sudden, Jason's looking in his pocket for something that might be behind him, and mm-hmm. that looks behind and all of a sudden, he makes maybe a little more mournful choice on that line delivery, because it's going to give him an extra half step to the turn to where he knows the steady cam's going to come around. The two of the guys, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I start feeling like, you're you're like making it for me. Uh, oh, Stop part is, like, doing so this. It's so fun. Too, I love that. It really was amazing to see. In fact, it got to the point where um, because Bob's crew and everyone was so good, they started anticipating and trying to do it. And then the guys who were really good and women who were doing it 
were like, it started to just speed up. And finally I was like, Matt, Jason, the don't do their job for him. You don't have to do everybody's <laughs> job. You, yes, I know you're great at it, but just worry about the scene. Cause it, I think they kind of started having fun with it. Like, because they had wonders and you'd have to see this yeah. and that. And Jason would know, like, you're probably going to want that magenta mm. in the background. So yeah, and I yeah. thought you'd like the window. And I was like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I did want the window. I didn't think I was that transparent. Uh, did <laughs> um, you, uh, did you, uh, do you, can you remember uh, having any sort of significant creative negotiation with Matt, either in the writing process or in the directing process, like giving him a note that he didn't want to take or writing a scene that he that he thought was kind of fine already? or Because didn't you have the writing process like Goodwill Hunting and back in college yeah. where you would... Well, they won an Oscar. You would, what, you would, you would uh, talk about it or improv it and we record, record it? We recorded it, yeah, on, on what were audio cassettes at the time. Kids, those were small brown no. tape cassettes really? put in devices. Wait, which, really? You guys talked out the script? Yeah, because we never thought of ourselves as formal writers. Right. Uh, we had a great uh, teacher, drama teacher in high school who taught us kind of sort of writing, directing, acting and didn't sort of put them in distinct silos. Yeah. So he was, we would actually end up making plays, which we later, I later realized we were act, write, direct them in effect, but we just thought we would improvise them and kind of distill them down and find a story. Such a great idea. So yeah. that's just how we know how to do it. So this Matt person I, did you such a, such a uh, favor by doing that, by sort of putting it all together, it. right? There's not no question without Jerry Speck and Matt, or I, or my brother, or Matt Mayer, or Max Casella, or Nico Larson, or all the people that came out of the program who are, who are working and who are terrific would, would I, I think, be working. Because he was, he, he taught us that, and he taught us to, like, to not take ourselves seriously, mm -hmm. respect other people, but take the work that we were doing incredibly seriously. And that was like that kind of, and there's that like great time of life when you have the older person who's the mentor, who you look up to, in the, who's, who's doing the thing you want to do, who says, this is meaningful, but you really have to work hard at it. Mm -hmm. And so we did. Ben, is that that's a, so? That was a teacher that you guys had at, at your public high school. That high you school, went to? yeah. We, I mean, our that's public fucking... high school just lucked out and got this guy who's a genius. That's wow. so he was amazing, <sighs> and he, he was amazing for kids that didn't even end up wanting to be in theater. And he was, I could do a, a whole thing on him, but the truth is, I I think that's part of why I learned to be collaborative is that Matt and I never fought or argued about stuff. It was always that we. And we never got our feelings hurt because most of the ideas are bad. So I'll have a bad idea, he'll have a bad idea. I'll have a bad idea, he'll have a bad idea. I'll have an idea with that's a little bit that maybe better. And then Matt, that kind of keys something in Matt that's mediocre. You know what I mean? And we, so we know we're building from there and it's never about, and then it just becomes about like finding the best thing until both of us feel like it can't be improved. And, and we kind of go like, and, and if there is a kind of difference of opinion, it always ends up coming down to who cares more. Yeah, I go, oh, man, I, I don't know. I really that. think I, this is about the, and he's like, man, that, mo and I go, ah, all right. Yeah. If you don't want to yeah, do it more than true. I want to do it, then we're not going to do it, you know? Or if I want to do it more than you don't want to do it, we're going to do it. Like, that's just common. I, well, Amanda and I try to live by that. There she oh, is. Oh, look, it's oh, Jennifer Lopez. Special, special guest star. There she is. Hi. You she can't hear us. Hi. Hi. Hi, Jen. Hi. Hi, Hi guys. there. You were just doing very well. We were talking about you in very favorable terms, and so yes. was your husband. Oh, thank you. I was singing so some much. of your songs back to you. And that oh, was sing, please sing. Yeah. We're waiting for the night. Oh! Oh, my love. It's waiting for tonight. <laughs> waiting for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's amazing. the mic drop right there. But thank oh, you. She crushed it. <laughs> but that's thank when you. we're lucky that we're that is brilliant. <laughs> I'm Thank you for you saying hi. Yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> Bye, looking Jennifer. Looking forward to doing this with you. Oh, guys. good. I love you. There's, there's the part that will make the show. <laughs> By the way, do we we just bypassed Jason. I didn't know this term, uh, creative negotiation. Yeah, that's you know, boy, you, really, way, way to take the art out of it, man. Uh, uh, you fucking find a way every fucking time. <laughs> just business, make, my friend. Just no, make no, you don't have to you. negotiate. Canal Street. How much for the, yeah. the, the the batteries? Hey, Picasso. How much paint did you use? How many cubic liters of paint did you use? <laughs> See, that's the just take thing. the fucking art out of it, baby. And fuck you. <laughs> <He'd>, uh, <laughs> You see, Picasso never had to negotiate with anybody because he was—it's just a single thing. Well, the, we're, what we're doing is like team stuff, right? That's so you've got to always true. negotiate. There is a lot of negotiation. I mean, the lucky that. thing is when you don't have to negotiate. When you go like, you know, you 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 do something, you write it, you give it to him, and then Jason sits down and reads the scene, and like, I he made me cry on this. I and I and, and then you feel like a jerk because you feel like that guy who just, like, uh, was it Marty Short or whatever who used to go, and then, oh. 
you know, you just want to give oh, one yeah. of like those. Was, what was the name of that character you played? Jim, Jiminy Jim, Glick? Jiminy Glick. Jiminy yeah, Glick. Yeah. I just watched him last just night. I, I have him. a question. Mr. Affleck. Do you? <laughs> and he goes, do so, so, so to wrap up the Matt stuff, and we'll we'll mm -hmm. leave him out of the rest of the interview. Um, uh, but the because uh, we've we've had enough of Matt, right? I mean, Will, yeah. with you, with your Wordle, Quirtle, and Squirtle every morning. <laughs> I want to get in on that. And Matt was no, like, you're, "You're not ready." I was yeah, like, ben, "I'm don't. not ready." Yeah, you know, I, I, I removed Jason myself dropped from out. It. He couldn't yeah. take the heat. No, oh, it's not the heat. Yeah. It's it's Will likes to tell you how much better his score could have been had he done X, Y, or Z. It's like anyway, that's guy, really. But, wait, wait, I wanted to close the map part of it. Uh, yes, to yeah. Tell for the, and, and you could, I know I would love to do a full podcast with you about artist equity and all the sort of studio economics that you're in. But they didn't, he told me you didn't want to do this It one. would put our audience to sleep. So for the, yes. those that, that have narcolepsy, do the quick version of generally what the concept is, what you guys are doing versus what exists um, and why that makes sense for you guys doing this since you're buddies and you want to kind of spread that kind of buddy feeling in the process. It's, it's a tough elevator pitch and I over talk and go on too long. So it's a bad combo. Sean will cut you off. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Basically what it is, is like over the years, as I'm sure you have, we start to kind of know like there's money that gets spent on things that don't end up making the movie any better. Right. And the more money that you spend on what you do, the more obligation you have, the sort of more risk there is and the less likely people are to do things that, you, you know, you consider more interesting. And they want to be more uh, conventional. Right. And then um, I looked around and, and it, I just, as a director, started to really understand and value the people on the crew who made such a significant difference to the quality of what you're doing, both in terms of speed and in terms of the environment and the way in which you're able to perform. But I'm a big believer that that the performance really ultimately is what, what draws people in and performance and the writing. And so we uh, came up with this idea, never thinking anyone would ever actually fund us, uh, to do a movie studio that was predicated on um, two things. Basically, in it, allowing the crew and the, the artist being the writer, I mean, and I consider the crew the artist, which is the whole group, actors, directors, writers, so on, yeah. as well as cinematographers, sound mixers, everybody who, who collectively create the value in, in what we're doing to benefit from the upside of it in a really meaningful, significant way, but also to be responsible for it. In yeah. other words, listen, if it goes over, you're going to get less. If it comes in under, you're going to do better, but all of us have to make it good. Otherwise, we're not going to get anything. Yeah, and right. sort of treat people like grown-ups. Believe they can be accountable and also believe that, you know, when because incentives have not historically been aligned between the people financing movies traditionally and, and the people making them always. Right. Right. And so without going into too great a detail, the idea was like, let, and let's separate this out from, like, what is the value of a, of a movie? Well, usually they'll use comps. Like, well, what's the budget? And what did you make on your last movie? And, uh, and especially now because there's no back end and no gross, that's sort of it, right? Right. Well, I've always felt that was akin to, to going into the Apple store and saying, I'll tell you how much I give you for the iPhone when you tell me how much you paid the guy that put it together. But right. that's, you know, you don't. That's not how it works, right? So right. why does it have to work in the other way? So, yeah. so what, by being agnostic as a, a financier and producer, this studio, and we had to then you know, hire all the business affairs and legal and physical yeah. production and so on so that we could be an entity significant enough to take on the entire creative responsibility of developing, producing, shooting, and delivering the movie. And in exchange, we got to say, look, this is what it's going to cost. It won't cost a dime more than that. If it goes over, we pay for it. But you have to sort of, we're going to be the ones who take on the burden, the role of saying, we're going to deliver something good. If it's terrible, it's our fault. Um, and But you're going to sort of um, put your trust in us to be able to do this. Yeah. I'm sure whatever yep. partners that we, we work with, they're excellent, brilliant people who are distributing and marketing movies. We don't do that. Uh, we don't want to do very many movies, but we want to just really make good movies with people we like. I right? love that. And that's it. And and we think you should be people should be paid more for for, for what they or so you're yeah. basically taking on the financial risk by by funding the production effectively. And then you're saying we don't need you you don't get the leverage financier uh, by giving us the money to make it, assuming that we don't have it to make it. We actually do. We're gonna spend the money to make it, and we're basically coming to you and saying, We'd like to sell you this product. We're gonna take care of the wholesale part. Here's the retail price. Who wants to buy it? Exactly. Yeah? 
Exactly. It makes a lot of that's sense. What he, that's what he just said. He just said. <laughs> I'm that. trying. To, I'm trying to see if my brain heard it right. So, so now, but then you, then once you have finished the completion of a film, you now have to enter into a whole other thing because you're you're going out there to distributors. Yeah. So are you mm -hmm. working with all different distributors, uh, all different shapes? Yeah. And obviously, sizes? business is like there's all sorts. It's changing a lot. You have streamers. You have you yeah. know companies that are theatrical and streaming and so and that's nobody's quite figured that out yet. My feeling is people are watching things and interested in them and that's going to be ongoing how they figure out the economics of where they place value on it you know there if we keep our focus to a few things and make them make try to make them really good and also i really was felt like you know interesting original dramas comedies sort of ideas were starting to fall away from the theatrical world yes it's kind of like nah that's not in movie theaters and so with this movie and this movie's themes are kind of congruent with with the ideas and the philosophy of this business like what are the people worth and how should they be compensated and isn't this it, the story itself i think is interesting me if i want people to go see movies like this I yeah think. i i watch watching your trailer i thought the that very thing the first time i saw it i thought nobody gets to make movies like this anymore because we've lived in a in a world where and everybody has benefited and, and participated to a certain degree in these sort of whatever you call them these temples or these these um including me yeah, no, that's what I mean. Everybody, all of us have benefited in certain ways. However, what happened was the result of that is is that these other kinds of movies that you're talking about... Without special uh, effects. Without special effects and that are story-driven and that are Well, your hair, but yeah. beside yeah. that... Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, th those things don't really... Those, those kind of movies don't really exist as much anymore. Not and in I the thought, theaters. Wow, and this one's the going to 3,000 yeah. screens, Well, part right? of the problem is fucking Ozark. Yeah, because right, yeah. it used yes. to be yeah. that, you know, you to put on a movie, you were competing, you know, like <laughs> Law and Order or whatever, Magnum. You know yeah. what I mean? You had an 11-inch yeah. black and white, and you could watch Simon and Simon, or you yeah. could go see, <laughs> well, you know, Simon. Murder <laughs> at 1600. Oh, my and God. And now you've got Succession and Ozark and really good fucking stuff where yeah. uh, people at home go, you know what, I, I can pause, I can watch tomorrow. Yeah. That's made it very difficult. But it looks and like they're approaching a good combo where you're getting a, you're getting a nice window of time in the, in the, in the brick-and-mortar theaters. So you can see it on a big screen if you want. Or you can wait, what is it? I think it's now basically six weeks before it'll be at your home as opposed to the old method was like three months. And it was... Yeah, I'm really grateful to Amazon. The first time they're really going for the, we're going to do a theatrical, traditional, you know, 3,500 screens out in the theaters. Go That's see amazing. it. Don't, you can't like wait to see it for free. Like, like not sort of upstaging it with a, sub, a very soon impending free version at home. This but is Amazon, right? Amazon, yeah. yeah. And they really are, are, are taking a flyer on this. And I really... I mean, I hope it works honestly for obviously for the movie, but also so that we can do it again. And the reason why, going back to that model, the one thing that we that we do ask is that like the the Hollywood model is kind of like I get paid in failure, right? Right. Like I still have the money. I, mean, I spent it, but like I made money on Geely. I didn't have to give it back. Right. You know what right. I mean? Right. Like everyone else went broke. And I got a car, you yeah. know? <laughs> so this is like, we're not going to get paid here. We're just going to spend what it costs to make the movie itself. And we're all going to show up and invest our time and energy. And if it works, and if it's successful, and if it's financially successful, you'll get paid, whether you're the cinematographer, whether you're the writer, the director, much more otherwise right. than you would have. But the relationship between how you're compensated and how much it connects to audiences is really direct versus just like, Hey man, you know I don't get out of bed for less than whatever, and and that's what I kind of, you know that that and such a nice thing to not have that vibe, you yeah. know where the people who are doing it just want to be there. And I think this this film's got a real good chance of 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 hitting that sort of zeitgeist thing only be well for two reasons. Number one, it's a story we all think we know but we don't. The whole story about how and why Nike got into business with Michael Jordan when Michael Jordan entered the NBA and when this whole start of this sneaker, this this whole Air Jordan thing. Like it's an incredible American business story that no one really knows how it how it went together and this this movie yeah. explained it. And you're releasing it during March Madness, which I think is and first of all, it's great. I heard it's I hear it's great from a, a few different people who've seen it. Uh, two of them are in the movie, um, but <laughs> they say it's great. Believe them. And uh, and uh, uh, you, you can come by the house and watch it anytime. By the way, I told I, Jay, he I didn't invite you because I told you nice two screen. or he three did times. Not. Please ask him to. Come. He, he did know, not. You, I think and you I'm, broke up during that, that part of the. Yeah, phone I'm call. desperate to see it, and and uh, I think Bradley saw it. Anyway, whatever it 
is. I'm desperate to see it. I think it sounds amazing. And Bradley won't let me see his movie until it's mixed. So it's really I, good. That movie's great. That movie's great. I heard. His, I heard. I read the script and I and I remember saying to him like, "This is you know, this is the movie." We're talking about like, Maestro, dude. Is dude, Maestro, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. incredible. And the, the test, it's amazing. It looks amazing. It's fucking amazing. Talk about movies that nobody. It's makes. the best script I've ever read. That that. It's that. really really good. And if, but I was gonna say for your movie, what's great is because it is like as Jason says, it does tell the story and it's so great and. You know, people like Jason, this is where they learn stuff is from the movies because they've never <laughs> read a book before. They have no so, life experience. Right, they have no life experience. So, but I, if truly, everybody says, and even Jason says this, which you never say, you didn't even, you weren't talking about yourself about how much you love the movie. I can say that he legitimately mm -hmm. loves it. So it's, I'm very excited to see it. Now, let's talk about Batman. Let's talk about the real thing that everyone well, can, can I jump talk, in let's before get down to business. Hey, no, Sean. because the only time we yes. we really hung out was when we did that thing with Kimmel about the uh, Batman, and then I stuck my head in as Lego Batman, and you guys all laughed at me. Um, I we do have funny. two Batmans on the podcast, Sean. I know that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. It's very one cool. real and one uh, yeah cartoon. But I saw the trailer for the Flash, and everybody was like freaking out when you came on the screen. You know what? That movie's good. I hear it's amazing. That movie's it looks really good. good. I hear that they, movie's they fucking made great. A good yeah. Yeah. I love that. And it's my best shit I've done. As I finally figured out how to play the guy. <laughs> no, really? I got it. For real? I was like, hold on. Am I, is that, I, I quit. I know I quit. And I know I came back to it. But yeah, I got it now. It's like, you know, when you do the audition and you're on your way home and you're like, no. Wait, what was yeah. the moment? What, yes. what, how did, yes. why did the, why did the penny drop? What, what happened? I, I mean, I don't want to give a spoiler, but it was a, it was a scene where I got, I get caught I get saved by Wonder Woman yeah. uh, during a, a, a conflagration with some 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 bad guys. Yeah, uh -huh. and she saves me by. Um, I mean, I'm sure I'm good, like the spoiler, you know, DC assassins. Are she, get me, but she saves you. The, some she way. saves me with the lasso of truth. Yeah, sure. and so what happens is that Batman. Um, divulges, you know, some of his real feelings yeah. about mm -hmm. um, his life and his mm -hmm. work, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it helps you. It helps you see the character, and now you want another that? chance to play it. And I was like, "Wait a minute! Oh, I boy. got it. <laughs> Am I still? Wait, can I, guys? Are we no. still rolling? Can we write <laughs> another story in my fucking life?" By, by the way, that. Ben, one, one time I remember years ago, and I asked him about it. Uh, I remember Alec Baldwin told me, saying in an interview that. He was driving home from Knott's Land when he was on Knott's Landing. Oh, yeah. And, and like on a Friday night and just going like, oh, fuck, that's how you do the scene. And he's like, from that moment on, he made a deal with himself that he would never leave it, that he would always figure out the scene while he was there. And it always stuck with me, especially because it was Knott's Landing. It's so funny. Alex told me a similar story, but totally different. <laughs> Is that true? Was, yeah, he loves this metaphor. He's like, you know why I'm a good actor, but not a great actor? And I was like, uh, no, Alec, and I don't want to answer that. Uh -huh. He was like, because I was playing Kowalski on Broadway. And I, uh, uh, it was the door, he was supposed to leave the screen door, and I guess in some, and, and the screen door wouldn't open, and he was exiting, and it wouldn't open. I shook it once, and I shook it twice, and it wouldn't open, and so I stepped around it. And right then, <laughs> right then I realized what would Brando do? He would have kicked it down. He would have kicked it down. And I was like, so... Oh, kick it down. Okay. Ah. <laughs> but he's, he's very focused on that, like, moment after thing. Uh -huh. Dude, that's hilarious. That really I want to ask you about, you've won two Academy Awards, Good, Good Will Hunting and Argo. Thank right? you. Yeah, I was welcome. wondering if we were going to get to yeah, that. Yeah, it's it. it. been the Jason <laughs> Bateman show. Your publicist is, like, all over me about that. I was like, okay, got it. Yeah, uh, uh, hello. <laughs> texting, texting, texting. Yeah, no, but I want to talk to you about Argo because you wrote me one of the funniest emails, which I want to read right now. Oh and we can God. cut it if you want, but it's really funny. Anyway, Victor Garber, who's a friend of ours, right? A he was staying in my guy, guest yeah. house here while you were filming Argo, which is three houses in his down. Guest house, but go ahead. Mm -hmm. What's that? He said you were in his guest house, but yeah, you sure, know, whatever. Yeah, we yeah, swap. Sure. Uh, we share, like you share a bank account, we share a guest house. <laughs> So um, I, we, we, I want to still share a bank account with Matt. All of a sudden, the deal's over after Born. You know? but, <laughs> but you shot Argo three houses down from me, and I would walk over in my pajamas and sit down That's and watch right. you direct, and it was super, super fun. And then, um, then you won the Oscar, and I was there uh, at the Oscars. And I wrote an email to you, and it's, I said, I'm so proud of him, so thrilled for you. I still, I'll, and then all the other qu uh, sentences said question marks. I said, I still haven't seen it, and I probably won't get to it. I'll probably have to Netflix it, and someone will have to read the subtitles to me, but I'm sure I'll love it like everyone in Iran says they do. And then I said, I love your speech, blah, blah, blah. 
And you wrote back, I saw your little sweet face when I was standing up there accepting my Oscar. In the middle of the greatest triumph of my professional life, I thought, I have got to tell Sean to go tanning. (laughs) (laughs) I fucking... So when I was doing all this research for you today, like all this stuff, I found that old... I was like, I can look at old emails. I laughed out loud. And then you wrote me another one. Haven't taken me up on it. Still (laughs) Still pasty. No, not at all. I'm, I'm translucent. So good. Yeah. Oh, Benjamin, this has been amazing. Way too much of is your it, time. Is it over? They told, they told me it's two hours. So oh, only an hour for me. It's just two hours. You, you don't usually do a two hour. It just okay, feels great. like You usually go three. Right? We usually I go three. I am a big fan. I got to tell you guys, I love the Mark Maron show. You are yeah. wonderful. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Shit. Oh, wrong shit. Wrong oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, the truth is you guys are, you guys are, uh, you do a great job. You manage to be very interesting to listen to. And no. yet very little of substance yeah. is ever yeah. said. We distract yeah. you with all the constant noise. That's yeah. all yeah. it is. It feels like uh, kind of wonderful. Yeah. I enjoy it. It's well. an honor and a pleasure to be on the show. Thank you for having well, me. Likewise. Well, likewise. Honest to God, you are fucking amazing in the movie. From the first time I met yeah. you on the very Day of Smoking nice. Aces, when I walked into that scene and you uh, did the monologue about, uh, about congenital alcoholism and herpes in a small <laughs> penis, <laughs> I have never... You can, If you go back and watch that dude, movie, there is not a movie. shot of me yeah, where that's I'm not, not from the movie. That's not from the movie, dude. He was just telling somebody. Yeah, we were just hanging out, Ben, I'm remember? Just, yeah. <laughs> They put it in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, I was like, this guy is a genius. A no. genius. Yeah, and I so. have never forgot it. And then Joe it's Carnahan's just fault. Been you know, he wrote a great scene and directed a great movie. To work with you. No, You're no, nice your man. fault. Genius. Nice Love man. Joe. Great in that. Great in extract. I, I have loved it. It's been we had pleasure. fun on extract. I, I think you're a genius. Yeah, yeah. you are. A I genius. do. I think uh, all that My mother become- thinks that word's overused. Yeah, no. it is. Usually, yeah, she's, pr- she's she hears right. it a lot about her sons. But right. we're really happy. Uh, I, I will say this: I'm so happy that you're directing movies and you're making movies like this, and that you're just continue to do fucking great stuff. And yeah, I can't I'm wait a fan to see. It. I and love it. Yeah. This is all I want to do. You, you do know. want to direct more than act, right? You love it. I, I you're you, so good you know, at it. I started really loving acting finally for real when I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Right. I'm just gonna direct movies. This is, I'm done with this. Right. I, I don't yeah. care. I just like directing. And then I was kind of like, well, I'm already here, and I yeah. can, you know, <laughs> yeah. do them both. Right. Act in the movies yeah. that you direct. Yeah. And then I just let go. And I remember Sidney Pollack um, once saying, when we did. He was a director and an actor. And I, we did a movie called Changing Lanes twenty some years ago. Oh, and yeah. he said to me, "You know why I'm a good actor?" <laughs> I was like, "No, no, no, Sidney, because I, I don't give a shit." Yeah. And I was like, I didn't understand at the time, but I, I know what he's getting at now, which yeah. is that so much of it just has to do with letting go and being mm-hmm. relaxed and trying things and not sweating what people are going to think. Yeah. And, you know, you know, trying the take that at the time Jason and Matt make fun of you for, but later on works in the movie. We know what we're talking about. <laughs> Wait, uh, really? Wait, which one was that? <laughs> <laughs> it was the take where I... Where I really wanted to play my part, and I interrupted Matt and made him wait a second. And you were like, maybe too big. Maybe that's too big. <laughs> I said wow. that? Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, no. I, 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 but believe me, the movie. Matt was right out in front of you. He was like, you can't do that. Hold on, hold on. Uh, oh, no, I'm oh wait a were... second! Oh wait, is this the one with the blaster glasses and the and the and the and the and the jogging outfit? Oh no, you were all unequivocal about that, and that didn't make that was too big. <laughs> Dude, no, it's this... on the poster. What do you mean it didn't make the movie? You're on the poster in your in your phaser glasses and your and your jumpsuit. That right? is historically accurate. I that get it. <laughs> no one's going to know that though. They're footage. just going to be like, "Oh, well, I'm trying boy. to promote it." Why? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here. The whole point was to get to the fact that that is not made up. Oh, that is the it's clothes so good. that were worn. And his purple is purple Porsche, and his he had a purple Porsche that said Nike Man. Yeah. This is Phil Knight, listener. Oh, uh, the, wow. the the uh, the guy who created Nike. Um, film I can't wait to see it. It's fun, and and so I do. Good. Once I started doing it and doing it with people, I I really loved, and it's true. I would I I love directing in a in a different way, but acting has become really fun. Tenderbar was really fun. Last Duel was really fun. The Way Back was really fun. Weirdly, for a movie about a person whose child dies and is alcoholic, you were awesome it was that. like it become joyful because I started developing my own criterion and stopped kind of making it about like. You know, who As likes Will me? says, it's a sexy indifference, yeah. right? Will? Yeah, I don't say that. No, I, I'm going with overweight indifference. <laughs> <laughs> 
Indifference is attractive. Well, whatever um, you're doing, please yeah. keep doing it, man. Uh, just such a fan. You're so, you're so great at what you do, and you always mm-hmm. have you're been. Right. And uh, just a thank huge you fan. very much. And I'm gonna hold you guys to it. Um, since you're all in the next one for free. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. Oh yeah. yeah. I told you no. the model. Yes, we'll thank do it for you, free. We we'll just guess. do it for the art. <laughs> Um, thank you. You're amazing for doing this. I'm too handsome for film. Uh, Will yes. you let me into the fucking Oct turtle battle, or, or do yeah. I my JV? So. Tell, tell Matt here it you is. Want yeah, in. give my your my age your number. Yeah, no. <laughs> what? Okay, great. Thanks. Does Matt own the invites? He's, yeah, he, he's yeah. the commissioner. So did well, he really? He did he really keep you out? I'll, 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 yeah, I'll totally talk locked to me out. I'll talk to well, him. not not even locked Matt. He was like maybe maybe keep. <laughs> you know, like that, like out of love. Try the crossword. Me. He yeah. finally, I tell him this. This is insane. He finally won today for the first time in like six weeks, and he was ecstatic. Really? Yeah, yeah. He was having a tough time. But like I say, once I found out that he's in the low fifties, now I, I maybe I'm wondering if there is kind of an intramural league that I can be because that. No, is I have okay. a feeling Ben's gonna wax all you guys. Yeah, it won't take you long. Believe me, you're a sharp guy. It will not take you long to fucking make us all look like fools. I'm starting to lose it. Yeah. <laughs> you are y'all young. Uh, yeah, Ginko. Sure. Ginko. Thanks, guys. I have Thank a question you. about Batman. Oh, sorry. Sure, sure. Go ahead. So, uh, sure. No, no, that's yeah, no, okay. no. Feel free. Go ahead, Colin. <laughs> I, I love uh, ben, what, what we... love you. Thank, Thank you for you, doing ben. this. Yeah, I love you, pal. Um, very, Seriously, very guys, nice. Jason has my number, and you guys, honest to God, like the movie is here, sitting here in, in the on the projector. And if you ever want to come at any point, even if I'm not here, it's like set it up, ring the bell, come watch the movie. You probably don't give a shit, and you're gonna end up, you know, watching. No, it no, down. they do, and you live about three blocks from Will. Okay, oh, wow. so yeah. someone has no excuse. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Well, no, we'll walk over. By the way, I, well, we will cut this, but I love the new house. Yeah, thank you. Well, yeah. the rental's not that. too fucking shabby. No. Is that is that the one you're talking about, Sean? No, the one that they the just purchased. Brought. Sean oh, is keeping up with Sean some is. of our celebrity journals. Yeah. No, no, no. I have a I have a real estate agent who's knows. Oh, uh, really? but uh, yeah, and the I, I, I the rental. I saw impressive. it under construction, and I was like, "This is amazing." So I, I'd love to see yeah. it when it's done. Uh, you are the first to be invited. No, <laughs> thank you. We heard it. We got it recorded. Um, thank, thank you, buddy. Benjamin. We love you. Thanks for the rest I of your night. I love you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, thank Ben. Bye, bud. Bye. Wow. Well. That guy, I mean, fucking wattage. Sean, see, we, that's so, just so when we so when we were talking big about big star wattage. I mean, we yep. had we had Damon on tour, and that's fine. That was fine. But then we have Ben <laughs> Affleck, <laughs> and just come in here with the fucking wattage. And I you're know. Like, well, that's that's the now, that's a star. That's, that's a star. The, yeah, through outer space. Yeah, yeah, through outer. Not like. Remember fucking Matt showed up in like a fucking hoodie and he fucking, yeah, like, you, you know what I mean? Let's just get through the interview. Uh, just get through know. the thing. And then Ben shows up and he's uh, handsome and he's talented and he's yeah. smart as fuck. He's prepared. And he's prepared. And he's prepared. On yeah. His hair is yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. He's Hang on a second. Jason, 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 sake, let yeah. me see your hands real quick. I want yeah, to see your no, hands no, while you're talking. It's, it's really busy. dark where you are. <laughs> um, no, all jokes aside, wow, was, uh, that was awesome. Yeah, so, and when I was doing like the research, you know, learning about him and stuff and about his past and whatever, I was like, and then you go through his credits, you're just like, wow. You yeah. Forget like, wow, Huge. bang, 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 hit after hit after hit after hit. Yeah. Big He's been hits. so relevant uh, and talented and successful for so long, and I feel like he's only halfway done. Yeah. Don't, and don't I think yeah. I don't know if this is true. Does anybody know it? Didn't he? Hasn't he played Batman more than any other actor? I'll bet. I think that that might be. I think you might be right. Yeah, I think so. He's played um, it five times. I think. Really? It's just, yeah. it's just, I'm, I'm so happy for him. Um, yeah. And th- this movie, he just, he crushes it. And Matt and him did a great job writing a lot of I stuff can't wait too. To see it. He's I such can't a natural as a director. I mean, Jason, it's kind of what you talk about when you spend all that time, you know, doing, and, and you've got a head on your shoulders, and you spend all that time on set and in that environment. Yeah, you got to absorb something. You absorb something, and you can kind of apply it. And he, ha- you have done it, and he has done it, uh, and he's made so many great films. You know, as you said. Uh, um, Sean. Sean. Yeah, Sean. No, 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 I know. But what was the what was the one about uh, Iran, the hostages? Uh, Argo. 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 So Argo, Argo, see that? The Town is amazing as well. That's another great film that he directed. Yes, like The Town. Just, I love that yeah, movie. Really, really good. Yeah, see, that's that what I'm saying. In. I didn't yeah. even get a chance to talk to him about The Town. That was so good. I know. Yeah. Well, because you, you were asking, you know, you had too many questions about like, out of left field. <sighs> He just texted me. I hate Sean. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. well, he spelt it S H A W N, but um, the hate is spelled correct. No yeah. way. No, that's not true. Um, no, he's uh, he's 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 the guy. My God, what an interesting. Lie. I'd like to read his book. I want to read his book. I want to read Downey's book. 
Um, just a book. <laughs> any book, I would guess, be great. right? Would be amazing. It's top at this to point. bottom, left to right. Right. Yeah. yeah. As long as the as long as the book has a. Binding center. The pages are bound. That works. Oh no, he doesn't even know. How Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Bennett Barbaco, Michael Grant Terry, and Rob Armjarf. Smart less.